In this video, I'll explain how you can use an INA 219 to measure current flow through a circuit of interest. The fact that the INA 219 can talk to an Arduino using I2C protocol is helpful, since this gives you the ability to create a log of current draw over time via data locking shield connected to an Arduino. I'm interested in understanding current draw over time since many of my circuits may use current intermittently and thus I may not get a representative reading just by hooking up a current meter for a few seconds. A better understanding of current draw for my circuits can also help me more efficiently size batteries and solar panels for projects that I'll be deploying in the field. When current flows through the INA219, the voltage drop across the shunt is proportional to the current flowing through it. Given that we know the resistance value of the shunt, Ohm's law can be used to calculate the current flowing through the entire circuit, including the load. By communicating the results digitally over I2C, I can programmatically retrieve them with an Arduino. As such, this is a nice tool for measuring and storing data for calculating power requirements. In the demonstrations that follow, you'll notice that the voltage drop across the shunt resistor will be very small. As such, the bus voltage will only be slightly less than the load voltage. In order to use the INA219 with an Arduino, you'll want to make sure you install the Adafruit INA219 library in your Arduino software. Further details and a link to this library are included in the learning section for this hardware on Adafruit's website or you can follow the link in the description of this video. Once that's installed, these are the functions that will be available to you for measuring current and voltage associated with your circuit, and this is an example of the code for retrieving the same as copied from the Get Current example sketch included with Adafruit's INA219 library. I'll be using this circuit to test current draw on simple Arduino circuits. Along those lines, one thing I noticed in the example get current code is this line that lets you improve the precision of measurements for circuits that draw less than one amp, which will be the case for most simple Arduino circuits. If you anticipate your circuit will draw less than one amp, I recommend removing the comment slashes here in order to give you better precision in your measurements. So this is the wiring diagram for the INA219 that's included on Adafruit's website. The example is specifically for understanding the current draw associated with the NeoPixel, with the results being communicated to a computer via a serial terminal using the Get Current sketch. I'm interested in something that's a little more versatile for measuring current draw associated with many different kinds of loads, while also allowing me to be untethered from a computer. So I came up with this design. Since I'll be testing Arduino circuits for the most part, I set up a 4AA battery pack on this board that can be turned on and off as needed, and I'm using these clips to facilitate quick attachment of both the testing circuit load to my INA219 and its associated power supply. I've also included a breadboard to facilitate wiring my INA219 and LCD to my Arduino data logger via the SDA and SCL pins, and also for getting power from my Arduino to the INA219 and LCD. Finally, Power to the measurement side of the setup will be provided through the VIN and ground pins and can also be realized through a USB cable, a wall wart, or a 9 volt battery connected to the barrel jack on the underlying Arduino. I should clarify here that in order to save pins on my Arduino, I've soldered one of these serial I2C adapters onto the back of my LCD display. This allows me to communicate with my Arduino using only two pins the same pins that will be used to communicate with the INA219. This shows a close-up of the LCD where the backpack jack is exposed on the left side of the LCD. Using wires attached to the jack for connections, the LCD will be powered via the power rail on the breadboard, and communication is realized through the SDA and SCL wires, which will be attached to the same breadboard row where the SDA and SCL pins on the INA219 are attached. This photo is just to reinforce that the SDA and SCL wires for the LCD and INA219 are shared by the same breadboard rows, which are subsequently wired to your Arduino. This shows where the SCL and SDA pins are attached from my breadboard to the Arduino with its data logger. In addition, I'll provide power to the breadboard rail from the 5 volt and ground pins on the data logger shield attached to my Arduino. 
Power to the circuit will be provided through the VIN and ground pins, or it can also be realized through a USB cable, a wall wart, or a 9-volt battery connected to the barrel jack on the underlying Arduino. So um, the little INA219 and the Arduino and this little data logger are all running off of a power supply which is off the screen. It's a, it's a little 6-volt battery. Here's my secondary power supply that's going to power this Arduino that's going to be running the blink sketch. So as soon as I power this on, we should see my bus voltage go up and we should also see my current go up. Now you can see that my bus voltage has increased to about 5.39 volts and that my current draw is 40.6 milliamps, 40.8 milliamps as a result of the Arduino running the blink sketch. And you can see that the uh, blink sketch is running as a result of that little LED blinking right there. So here's another example of a more sophisticated circuit that I might be interested in. Uh, you'll remember that this is the, uh, the circuit that I demonstrated uh, earlier in the playlist that actually lights this LED and takes a picture when flow is detected through this little water sensor. And I should mention that I did disconnect the uh, LCD because if I were to deploy this in the field, of course, there'd be no reason for me to have an LCD. So now you can see that my bus voltage went up to about 5.13 volts. Um, you can see that there's a little LED on on the water sensor right now. Can't really tell what's going on because I turned off my LCD, but if we get this water sensor wet, Uh, in its next measurement, which takes place once every 10 seconds, it should actually light up that little LED and we should see a change in the, uh, in the current draw. But as it currently stands, it's drawing about 133 milliamps. To keep that camera going, the data logger and the Arduino, you can see now that because this is in water, the LED is turned on. My current draw is still about the same, about 130 milliamps. And you can see now that the data logger is actually writing data as a result of that little light blinking on and off. And my current draws pretty consistently about 100 and between 120 and 130 milliamps. And here's one more. You might recognize this as my little PMS 5003 air quality sensor. What I intend on doing with this is uh, strapping this to my bike and riding around town, maybe uh, riding along the loop, which is a path along the Santa Cruz River and then riding in town and seeing what the uh, difference in air quality is. In any event, let's see what kind of current draw that this, this will take. So we're looking about 130, well, just dropped, about 130 milliamps on this one. Uh, the sketch that I've got loaded that I'm testing right now is actually running this little GPS receiver and it's actually writing uh, data to that little uh, card so that I can get a geographic uh, distribution of um, air quality as I'm riding my bike through town. So, cool. In conclusion, this tool will help me understand how to size batteries and solar panels for field deployment of my circuits where there's no wired power supply. I'm learning about the same at this time and we'll share details in a future video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for updates.